Hey, it's Mike here, and today, Fusobacterium, a genus of bacteria that you probably haven't heard of, but it's really important, and we should learn about it because it's implicated in a ton of diseases as new studies come out, mainly colorectal cancer, but also other cancers, as well as endometriosis and rheumatoid arthritis, and even in our mysterious disease, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So keep watching this video, and you too can become a genus just don't cause diseases. And you may have heard recent headlines of a oral bacteria that drives colon cancer. Of course, oral and colon led to a lot of dirty jokes. You can make them to yourself. But there's a lot more to this story in terms of diet, which I haven't seen the headlines cover at all, as well as a major twist that didn't make it into the news. But I'm not gonna tell you right now because A, I wanna be annoying, and B, uh, you need some complicated background first before it makes sense. And yeah, just don't be a slave to those short, quick answers. You wanna know? Sorry, let's go. For some background, a bacteria being a cancer concern is nothing new at all. If you're familiar with stomach cancer, you might know that H. pylori, a bacteria, is considered a cause of it. In fact, being a class 1A carcinogen, in terms of the WHO, the only bacterial infection to do so, to reach that classification. They now believe it accounts for approximately 75% of all human stomach cancer cases. So surely it makes sense that there are other bacterias out there that we are going to discover play a role in cancer. And in this case, we're talking about Fusobacterium and in particular the species Fusobacterium nucleatum. And it is a oral bacteria mainly, that's what it's known for, though it gets to other places in the body as we will discuss. And it is a sort of opportunistic mouth pathogen. It helps cement together those dental plaques. It can also fuel oral infections and contribute to periodontal disease. And it looks kind of like little worms, which is really creepy, and I'd prefer to not know. <laughs> and the crazy thing is that this bacteria seems to just show up in various cancers around the body, as this paper mentions. Not just in cancers where it should be, but also like pancreas and breast cancer. What? How does it get there? We'll cover that in a bit. And it is the case that Fusobacterium species in general are considered just normal parts of your microbiome your oral flora, as well as your gastrointestinal and genital tracts. And that plays a role in endometriosis, which we'll touch on in a little bit. But it's the case that this can just infect your body through being bit by an animal or even bit by another human. But I do have my money on Necroforum being the most likely cause of the next zombie apocalypse, if there is one from these. But for most disease risk, we are talking about Fusobacterium nucleatum as the species, and then for colorectal cancer risk, Animalis as the subspecies, we can just call it FNA for short. And the concern here is that it hangs out as an oral bacteria, that's where most of the population probably starts, they believe, and then it slips past our digestive tract, makes it into our colon. But this study is the main one. It's very recent and covered by the news. They took tumors from 200 people with colorectal cancer, and half of them had this particular type of fusobacterium in their tissue. And researchers did, through genetic analysis, find that in colorectal cancer patients, the fusobacterium nucleatum in their colorectal tumors matched that of their mouth. However, most of the bacteria down there probably came from your mouth anyway but the idea here is that it's a reservoir in your mouth, which could be a risk. So this FNA is a particular risk for fueling colon cancer tumors, as this paper mentions. There's evidence that it accelerates tumor genesis and also induces resistance to chemotherapy, which sucks. But the recent discovery comes down to the particular type that could be doing the damage. So we started with Fusobacterium, we added Nucleatum, then we added... Animalis, and now we have to look at particular clades, and the new research points to one clade in particular, referred to as clade two, that is resistant to our stomach acid that can more easily make it from our mouth down to our colon. Sorry, all the other people with their imaginations of how it got to the colon, but Scientific American says, and from the main author, these microbes also have one of the most potent acid resistant systems found in bacteria, which lets them tolerate the stomach's acid environment. And they found that this particular clade two was present in the mouth and dominated tumors. 
Now compared to clade one, for example, but that might not be the only pathway it needs because as I mentioned before, Fusobacterium nucleatum is associated with dental infections. And if you have gingivitis and recurrent bleeding, for example, it can make it into the bloodstream. And from there, it can get to those other tumors or joints, etc. This is called hematogenous translocation. And yeah, that's probably how it would get into breast cancer cells. And this is where the particular clade discovery comes in because researchers actually took two clades of FN that animalis strain and found that one of them did much more damage than the other in particular caused more oxidative stress and inflammation in tumors. But of course that was a mouse study. You know I don't like those for several reasons and it also appears to be that in mice it accelerates the creation of new tumors a little bit it drives tumor growth, but there's still debate as to whether it is like an initial cause of cancer. There's sort of information supporting both sides. And with the study on 200 people finding a strong association with fusobacterium and colorectal cancer, but weirdly not in advanced tumors, saying it might be an opportunistic passenger. However, that study's seven years old, didn't look at the clades. And now for a quick break with today's sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. Some of you guessed right. Yes, this is a prebiotic and a probiotic together. And this guy has 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains, which are scientifically shown to support various areas of health, such as gut immunity, gut barrier function, which we've been talking a little bit about, overall digestive health, as well as skin health, heart health, and more. I've covered a lot of seed related science in my seed segments, but there's one that I need to rehash here and that has to do with short chain fatty acids, which we're gonna cover and talk about how they're really important here. And this study used a simulated gut ecosystem, blasted it with alcohol or antibiotics or control and saw how it responded to seed or no seed. The results, the seeded ecosystems were able to better recover their bacteria's short chain fatty acid production. Now this is a huge health benefit of our probiotic gut bacteria. You know, it helps regulate inflammation, helps protect our gut lining, etc. And Lindy and I, as I always say, have been taking seed since 2021 now and loving it. Now, Lindy loves to tout her benefits. And if you would like to try it, you can of course click the link below and use the code Mike25 for 25% off your first month's supply. All right. But speaking of mouth, what about diet? Is diet having any effect here? And that brings me to, of course, the food you think of when you think of colorectal cancer, and that is meat. And you might be thinking like, mur, 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 of course he's a vegan and he wants to do that. Hey, I was gonna do a video on this before I made this connection, all right? So let's just get it going. First of all, from this paper, quote, long-term consumption of red meat and high fat diets can increase the proportion of conditional pathogens such as Fusobacterium nucleatum, also E. coli, which is not good, of which their metabolites can cause barrier dysfunction, inflammation, and other deleterious changes that can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. And we have an interesting smaller study here. It's on 36 people but they all had colorectal cancer and they looked at their diet and then whether or not they had fusobacterium in their tumors. And the result was that meat consumption was related to the intestinal level of this fusobacterium with high meat consumers having greater quantities. And that's in both cancerous and non-cancerous tissue. And they also found that the abundance of FN in cancer tissue increased with the oral concentration. So I wouldn't be surprised if in some way or another meat consumption increased or fed the oral fusobacterium that we have, which of course could be that connection to periodontal disease. We see higher red meat consumption also associated with that. And I didn't really know why until now we have a hint. And next we have a much larger study that looked at nearly 1000 tumors. They looked at people's diets and whether or not their tumors were fusobacterium positive. And the findings were rough, in particular in the proximal or first half of the colon cancer was 2.6 times more likely with a worse diet index. And this diet index was higher meat and lower vegetable consumption. So what's going on here? Well, some have pointed to how red meat could just be feeding these bacteria through heme iron in particular, maybe creating blooms. But it's also the case that this is an opportunistic pathogen that would like to eat your flesh if it gets a chance 
and it would also like to eat the uh, dead animal flesh that is within your body if you eat that. I'd love to see more research on whether meat consumption, you know, in a trial, for example, going from lower to higher would increase the level or going from higher to lower, perhaps going on a vegan diet would decrease the level of oral fusobacterium. Somebody do that. But this is where the twist comes in and we have a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde situation with regard to diet. Don't you love how science is just never straightforward? Well, in this particular situation, Fusobacterium nucleatum could be helping prevent the growth of tumors as well in a certain condition, and that condition is fiber. Oh, blew your mind. Yes, as this study found, Fusobacterium nucleatum, when given certain fibers, inhibited colorectal cancer cell growth by up to 50%, though it was just a petri dish study. And as researchers summarized, dietary fiber determined F. nucleatum to be a carcinogenic or anti-tumor bacterium. So well, you probably don't want high levels anyway, you can either feed it meat and it might feed cancer, or you can feed it fiber and it might starve cancer. How does it do that? Well, it appears to be through the production of the short chain fat the acid butyrate. As this paper mentions, the beneficial effects are related in part to the genetic and epigenetic regulation of gene expression. In addition, butyrate exhibits several anti-tumor effects that suppress colorectal cancer development. And from another study, which is a petri dish as well, quote, butyrate can induce the apoptosis or programmed cell death of colorectal cancer cells where you just tell cancer cells to die. And this is where we get to the topic of early onset colorectal cancer because this was framed as like, we're exploring this and we really need to get this down because those earlier cases are going up. I recently did an entire video on that. And I talked about, you know, red meat's connection as well as other things. And processed meat from a early onset colorectal cancer perspective was more associated than smoking, one of the main risk factors. And while we have a bunch of signals in different ways, it's likely that there are certain subgroups of the population that are eating really low fiber, really high meat, and they're the ones that are at risk. You can watch the whole video on that. But then this prompts the question, is it that this bacteria is new and now might be fueling early onset colorectal cancer cases? Well, I don't think it is. However, perhaps with this new clade, there's been an evolution to make it survive stomach acid better, in which case it has evolved Evolved to make eating red meat more dangerous. So either way, in that case, it's red meat. All right, now really quickly, let's cover a couple more diseases. First of all, we have endometriosis. I've done a whole video on this. It's really important. It's the case of the uterine lining material sort of growing out around into different parts of the body where it shouldn't be usually, you know, in the abdomen, up against your intestines, whatever, painful, horrible disease. Well, from this study in a cohort of women, 64% of patients with endometriosis had fusobacterium infiltration, but less than 10% of controls were found to have fusobacterium infiltration in the endometrium. And this is a situation where they say, instead of going from oral down, it might be from that genital tract upwards, genital tract, which they say can quote, induce phenotypic transition in endometrial fibroblasts that cause endometriosis. So it's actually an infection in particular here, like H. pylori, that could be triggering this whole process in certain people. And the data adds up, yeah, from the nurse's health study, greater than two servings of red meat a day was associated with a 50% increased risk of getting endometriosis. And meat-related studies that don't talk about bacteria hypothesize that this could be from raising estrogen. But wait, I thought meat equals man, big, loud, truck, truck, slam, slam. And that brings me to rheumatoid arthritis, which is like autoimmune arthritis, joint issues. Also interestingly from this study in the journal Cell, Fusobacterium was higher in rheumatoid arthritis patients and migrates one of its inflammatory proteins into the joints, not good. It's fascinating, we need more data on this. But once again, the picture adds up and perhaps even worse here from this study. Depending on the statistical analysis they used, high beef was associated with a two to three times risk of rheumatoid arthritis, leading scientists to even say that the study indicated that there is suggestive evidence to support the causal effect of beef intake and rheumatoid arthritis. You know, suggestive doesn't sound like much, but that is very suggestive language for scientists. Throwing around the word causal is not common. People with IBS have higher levels of fusobacterium and it appears to cause dysbiosis or imbalance as well as trigger increased pain sensitivity for internal organs, what? Visceral hypersensitivity? All right, in the end here, researching this, it was just twists and turns. At first I was like, oh, this just oral bacteria might do something with colorectal cancer. I should report on that anyway 
anyway. And then I was like, hmm, is there a dietary connection? Searched around for it and it was like, holy crap, red meat is highly connected here. I mean, this thing could just be feeding off red meat and then feeding off people and then potentially causing other diseases. Did I say, did I say potentially? No, this could be how it's getting to other cancers, which we need more research on and how it could be negatively affecting those. I probably could have extended this video with that, but of course the colorectal cancer progression caused by it, as well as it getting to you know, endometrial tissues, as well as joints, not good stuff. And then of course the fascinating idea that this could be a Jekyll and Hyde situation where whatever this bacteria you naturally have could be actually helping you if it has fiber. I would love to see more studies on that. But then if you give it red meat, it's like, screw you, I'm vegan. I'm gonna destroy you by eating you. Okay, so maybe it's not a vegan bacteria. Anyway, of course, if you would like to try some actually probiotic bacteria, uh, yeah, you can click the link below and use my code Mike25 for 25% off your first month's supply of seeds, DS01 Daily Symbiotic, and let me know down below what you thought about this fascinating topic. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.